And, uh, how you doing? We're excited to have you on throughout the season. Um, I'll, I'll start in a fun way. Have you ever been thrown out of any game in your life? No, I fouled out of a basketball game once in high school. That's about as close as I've gotten to being kicked out of anything. <laughs> Come on, you gotta you gotta get fired up. Ninth inning, games in the line, up misses a call, maybe not a save situation. Just go crazy <laughs> one time. Throw, you know, throw some dirt or throw your glove up in the air. Just do something to get kicked out. It's fun every once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, your story is pretty good. That's it's always fun to hear guys' stories and hear kind of the details that you don't really see, you know, every day. So that, that was good. Did you see the Real Muto thing from yesterday where, you know, there was the pitch clock violation, then he puts the glove back and he goes like this. And it almost, it looked like, I think, you know, some people had the, the gif where it's like, it looked like, ah, too slow. Yeah, it was impeccable timing. I don't think you could have timed it any better, even if you were watching the umpire yourself. I mean... <laughs> This, I, I don't understand that. I mean, like you guys said, it was pretty, pretty bad call there. And I mean, it's spring training. I don't, I don't really understand that call there. Ryan, you ready to go for the regular season? You have two more days. You guys are locked and loaded. You're going to be the closer this year, throwing 104 out of the bullpen. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm excited. You know, I had a good spring. It was fun down there in Florida. Um, we got a really good team. I'm um, excited to see, you know, what we can do this year and, uh, Brought in young Jordan Walker, too, so he'll be fun and, you know, get the crowd buzzing. Got a young prospect in there, so uh, should be a lot of fun. You know, we got a lot of guys back this year and should be all healthy and ready to roll. Speaking of young prospects, congrats on the baby. How's how's that going? And, like, what does how does that change? Did you get any extra dad strength? Are we going to see some – are we going to see, like, Jordan Hicks looking up at your velo and be like, dang, <laughs> how did he get the, such an uptick? <laughs> well, yeah, after after I had the baby last year, that's when I hit 104. So, I mean, we'll see if I still got some more in the tank, you know, to tick up. Uh, but it's been fun, man. Being a dad's awesome. Uh, you definitely realize, you know, what really matters in life. And it's been fun to watch her grow and uh, see all the milestones she's hit and stuff. And uh, it's been fun. So where did the velo come from? Because you were a starter in the minor leagues. You, you started in college. And now you're a closer. And it you just now all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm going to throw 103 miles an hour today. <laughs> where did it come from? Can you explain? Is it, was there a process or did it just kind of come out of nowhere when you went to the bullpen? Yeah, it was kind of just gradual. I mean, my freshman year of college, I was topping out at 94. And then my sophomore year was 97. Um, got drafted in 15. My first outing in pro ball, I hit 98. And then the next year in 16, when I was starting, I hit 100 for the first time late in the year. And then 17 and 18, would hit 100 a few times, not too much as a starter. And then 19, my debut, I actually hit 102 coming out of the bullpen. And then, um, yeah, last year in 22, just upticked even a little more. So I think it's just kind of kind of growing a little bit, getting better at pitching and learning how to use my body and, you know, being able to get more out of my body while doing less, if that makes sense. And um, just kind of progressing, you know, just always trying to get better. I love it. Just 102, no big deal. Ah, that was, was 101, 102. Now I'm 104. Ah, just uptick. <laughs> don't don't sneak. He said he said he gets to use his body. This is a big boy. Like don't don't like don't sneak on anybody who hasn't seen Ryan Helsley on the mound. Two thirty. Are you still 230, 235 plus? Yeah, right, right on there. 230, 235. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a it's a big boy coming at you. And I talked to a I won't say who it was, but a very significant hitter in the NL Central, and he said, "You are suffocating on the mound." Like, <laughs> do you feel like do you feel like you're suffocating on the mound? Do you feel like when you get out there, you're like, "Dang, I'm a beast." Or are you like, <laughs> "Oh man, I hope I hope I do good because I can throw it really hard." No, yeah, in a sense, I think you got to have that attitude, you know, especially coming out in the ninth or in the back end, you know, because usually you're facing two, three, four hitters night in and night out, so you kind of got to have that mental edge with yourself, you know. I mean, you got to go out there and be able to take care of business and, um, you know, get after guys because if you have that scared mentality out there, they can sniff that out at the plate and they're going to eat you alive, especially in the big leagues. And Kratzy, he's got dirt in his spikes now. I mean, he's like a senior member when there's a 20-year-old cracking the roster in Jordan Walker. <laughs> so what's this dude like? Actually, he's bigger than you, but what's he like yeah. as a person? And what was that like the other day hearing that he got called up? Yeah, that was awesome, man. I was rooting for him all camp. 
I heard a lot about him the last couple of years and never got to watch him play until this spring. And, you know, seeing him take care of his business, like, you know, kind of like Goldie and Nolan, you know, he knew what he was doing already at 20 years old, which is pretty crazy to say. And, you know, it wasn't phased by anything, you know, handled diversity well. And he just got out there day in and day out, smoking baseballs all over the place and playing outfield well. And he's a lot of fun. He's a great kid. And I'm excited to see what he brings to this team this year. Was he nervous throughout spring training, hoping that he would make it? Like, give me a conversation that you had with him, even if it was just a few lines. Yeah, I don't think so, honestly. I think he came into it, you know, really well mentally. It's kind of like if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, he just came in there and was like, I'm going to show what I'm capable of and, you know, kind of forced their hand, in which he did. And uh, he's kind of a quiet kid, you know, which I probably would be too if I was 20 years old and, you know, in a locker room with guys like Goldie and Nolan and Wayno and stuff like that. You know, I'd just sit back and learn. And he's been a great job and a great teammate thus far. How do you go, how do you go from how your season ended last year like talking about learning and like watching these guys to spring training games where you're like, Ugh, you know, we were just in the playoffs and now you're like trying to lock into a spring training game. Like how, how is that? How is that mentally for you, especially as a closer? Like you're probably throwing what right. first out of the bullpen. Yeah. I was throwing like the fourth or fifth inning most days and um, just trying to treat it as much like, you know, a game as possible, you know, just trying to get the mental reps, you know, I know it's hard out there and, 12 o'clock game in Florida with 4,000 fans instead of 40, you know, it's a little different and not as much journaling there, but just trying to get the mental reps and, you know, stay like locked in mentally. And then, you know, during the season, obviously it'll be an uptick with the adrenaline, the game has been a little bit more important. Ryan, you went to arbitration with the Cardinals this year. <clears throat> how was that? We had Corbin Burns on here and he went off on the Brewers saying how bad it was. And I saw some <laughs> quotes from you about how terrible it was. So, can, again, can you explain that? And, and has anything changed with you and your relationship with the Cardinals? Because you did grow up a Cardinals fan, and I think you said Mosellock and the GM were not in the room, right? Yeah, they were not in there. Um, yeah, it was a weird experience. You know, my uh, team did a great job of informing me kind of what it would be like and kind of the gist of what they would say about me and things like that. So I kind of knew what was going to happen, but it's pretty crazy how they, you know, <clears throat> your employers talks bad about you and then right after you know they want to be best friends and you know act like nothing ever happened and it's pretty it's a pretty crazy experience and you know I think there's a better way to go about it I don't know what that is but um you know to have them go in there and kind of talk bad about the year I had you know felt like I did some pretty good things last year and they still find ways to kind of tell you you stink so that's that's kind of tough to hear sometimes what well, did, what did they say what was what was one thing that they said cuz I mean I'm looking at your baseball reference page and it's I, I don't really know what they could pick out. Yeah, they tried to use some <clears throat> injury stuff against me. <clears throat> had COVID in 20 and just saying, like, I didn't have enough holds and saves and stuff like that. But uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pull out any tricks and everything, you know, to kind of help their, their side. Isn't it funny how holds don't matter <laughs> until you're getting saves, and then when you're getting saves, holds <laughs> saves don't matter, it's only holds? Yeah. It's amazing yeah, how you know, they can flip-flop all the stats. Or, oh, this doesn't really matter because – you're going to make more if we count this one. Then the next guy comes in. They're like, well, he was good at saves, but not holes. This guy gets saved. You know, it's like crazy how the team. But remember, I liked your quote where you said, I'll remember this and I'll use it to my advantage. So if you have to go again, now you know their tricks. See, so right. you could say, well, okay, they, well, they like these better. I'm going to, I want these instead of these. And I remember, I, I think it was Josh Hader, right? Who said, who came out after with the Brewers and said, I'm not doing multiple inning saves anymore because the Brewers don't value him. And then, well, then he got traded. So. He still, no, he's still, life's good for him. He's, yeah, he's, he's in San Diego. A, he's on an amazing team, so that's fine. It's just it, Corbin Burns said they told him in arbitration, oh, um, your team, uh, we didn't make the playoffs because you had like a few bad starts. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> that dude's been one of the best pitchers in the league for three seasons, you know. It's pretty crazy to hear that. And, you know, going back to what you said about holds and saves, you know, coming up in the bullpen – you hear saves the only thing that gets you paid, you know, and we go in the our room and they're putting holds and saves in the same category. So I don't have as much as some of these guys, but I have, you know, 10 or 15 more saves of certain guys. And now I'm getting paid less than those guys. So it's pretty crazy how they can make things look like you're not as good as you are to the panel and, you know, kind of persuade them in their way. <clears throat> so now, I mean, I know, I don't think this came into play, but do you know who the high has the highest batting average? of anybody that's ever played 
at Northeastern State University in the big leagues. Do you know who has the highest batting average? Probably, probably myself. Yeah. One for three. Absolutely. Absolutely. One for three. <laughs> we, don't quanti- we don't quantify that with small sample size or anything, Eric. There's no just... minimum plate appearance yeah. to your Something. trivia question? <laughs> no. All, all the, hey, the only parameters were – you have to be a boss, you have to have played in the big leagues, and you have to have gone to Northeastern State University. Nobody hit over 333 there, ever? No, in no, the no. Big leagues. In the big oh, leagues. Oh, that made the big leagues? Yes. Okay. Has you know anyone else made the, big made the big leagues? From you know that how many school? People? How many? I'm honestly not sure. I don't think so, but maybe. Maybe back in the day. Four. Four guys. The last one was in 1980, I think, so... It's been a minute. I don't think you played with any of them. Even AJ didn't play with any of them. So. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Amazing. Ryan, you grew up. Can you say I, – I've tried to say this name. Taliqua? Taliqua. Taliqua. Oklahoma. And that's where Northeastern yep. is, correct? Northeastern yep. State is yep. there? So you grew up there. You went to school there. You had your number retired there. Are they going to change the name to Helsley – Ellsley, Oklahoma. You've done kind of everything in that little town. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day. Maybe uh, I might have to make the Hall of Fame in the Major League Baseball for that to happen. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, grew up small town kid. You know, grew up there and then went to school there. And still, I was trained there my first seven off seasons. Um, loved it there. This past year, I actually trained at Arkansas. But uh, maybe one day we'll get the get them to change the name of it. And Ryan, you're Cherokee Indian, correct? Yes. And you speak Cherokee? I just know a few words. Can we, I can't can we really get a couple? It. Can we get a couple? What I mean, uh, yeah, whatever almost, words you speak. Almost, almost water. Um, hello is OCO. Uh, Wado is thank you. Um, what else we got? Doxy is turtle. I just know bits and pieces here and there. No baseball like lingo. OCO. No, no baseball lingo. Never heard anyone speak Cherokee. Yeah. No, no. I mean, absolutely. And and does anyone in your family speak it? Yeah. So on my mom's side, my grandma and grandpa are fluent in it, and they can speak wow. it. And uh, my grandpa's full blood. He'll be ninety three in two days. So um, yeah, they they speak it fluent. I always give them a hard time because they watched us when we were growing up. My mom was at work, and they never spoke it around us. So I wish they would have taught us that. What does your family think about what you do? Like, did they always know that you were going <laughs> to pitch in the bigs? Or was it something that, you know, kind of picked up later on in life where they were like, eh, I think Ryan's going to make it? Yeah, you know, uh, when I was little, we had the questionnaires, you know, in like kindergarten, first grade, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I always put MLB baseball player on it or NFL player. And uh, I always signed my name all over everything, like all of my dressers and stuff when I was little. And my mom and dad would get so mad and be like, well, I hope that's worth something someday. And, you know, I was kind of a late bloomer. I obviously went to a small school, didn't get recruited very much. And, you know, was thankfully picked in the fifth round and, you know, had a good minor league career and obviously made it up. And, um, yeah, I think when it first clicked for me and my family, I, being from a small school, I played summer ball in California with the Santa Barbara Foresters. And there was, I don't know, 40 guys on the team, and I think 37 of them were from big-time schools like Arizona State, Texas, you know, Rice, just these blue blood schools. And so that was kind of a wake-up call for me and, you know, kind of an opportunity for me to go out there and prove myself. And I think that was probably the first time it kind of clicked. How did you get out there? Can we get a Kratz at Santa Barbara Foresters? Yeah, I don't think I have I don't think I have one of those. <laughs> I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't invited. How did you get out there? How did you get out to, so my- to there from Northeastern? My head coach at the time, I guess, had a connection um, with Bill Pintard somehow. And he's like, I talked him into getting you on the summer ball team. And I didn't want to go play at first. I just wanted to stay home and hang out, you know, because I wasn't really thinking pro ball at the time. And, you know, my head coach talked it into me and was like, hey, you know, this is a good opportunity for you. I think you need to go out there and kind of prove to yourself how good you really are. And, you know, I didn't dominate or anything like that, but I had some decent success out there at times. And, um, Drove out there 26, seven hours and stayed for two months, you know, and had a blast. Hey, Ryan, uh, what's your entrance song? Um, is it the same as last year? And how did you come up with it? Yeah, uh, I think it'll still be the same unless the media wants to change it or do something with it. But uh, 
it came about in 2020, 2019 during players weekend. Um, I had like the nickname on the back as hell's bells and I hadn't picked up a walk up song until the, that day. And they actually chose it for me when I came out of the bullpen and it was hell's bells and it just stuck ever since. And, um, this past year, later in the year, they came up to me and were like, Hey, we want to do some stuff with the lights and maybe flash them, turn them off when you come in. Is that okay? Like, will it bother you? And, um, I was like, yeah, do whatever you want. You know, I'm dialed in on the game. I'm not really paying attention to what else is going on, you know, and focused on who I'm about to face. And I said that, and then they turned off the lights, you know, and it got me hyped up even a little more and had to take a couple extra seconds before I threw the first pitch. I felt like I was about to, you know, lift off the ground. I was so amped up. So, um, but it, it's a lot of fun in there. The place goes nuts. Um, it's, it's a sick setting for sure. Ryan, you know who had Hell's Bells. You yeah. know, you know. Right? So? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I feel like it might be like trademark infringement no. a little bit. You don't, don't retire as so- what, Dude, no one's coming into Enter Sandman anytime soon. They might. I, they no, might that would be no. some balls to come in Enter be, Sandman. I mean, I give, I'm giving Ryan credit for having some balls to come into Hell's Bells right They now. gave it to him. He just said. I know, but I would kind of be like, once I got the closer job, I'd be like, there's got to be another song with Hell something in it. I think it's cool. Highway to Hell or something. Does, has anyone ever music? said like, oh, you know, that's the, you're taken from another, you know, legendary closer or whatever? Or yeah, I, yeah, hey, I, had, if I was you, I'd be like, screw it. It's, it's <laughs> what what about your Sandman? <laughs> Same thing with Mo. He can call me if he's got a problem with it. <laughs> tell him to call me. <laughs> Trevor, I don't think Trevor's gonna call him. <laughs> Why not? Trevor's a nice dude. Trevor's great. He's a great guy. I've I, had I some, guarantee I've had some fans. Trevor doesn't care. I've had some fans kind of say you shouldn't be using that, you know, because obviously Trevor's one of the best to ever do it, um, you know. But I think if that was me, I think it was cool, you know, to have a younger player in today's game, you know, kind of use my walkout. And, you know, if anything, I think it's kind of in honor of him and kind of what he does and motivation for me to kind of kind of do what he does or do what he did. You got to get the changeup going, though. You can't be throwing 104 because Trevor was like 88 with like, <laughs> <laughs> like a 60 I might need to get him on the phone. Yeah. Have you, have yeah, you ever spoken teach, to Trevor? Teach me a few things. No, never, never directly. No. So he, he, his entrance in San Diego was, the, the, I know Mariano in New York and, and Gagne when he came in, and now we have Timmy Trumpets with Diaz. But when Trevor Hoffman came in in San Diego and they lit up the giant scoreboard in Petco and they, they started, doom, I was visitor. You get like goosebumps. You're like, Oh God. I get, and then Even I as a visiting and, player. Yeah. And then you're like, God, I got to go try and get a hit off this guy. Now which is like, <laughs> you're standing there on deck and boom, Trevor comes running out and he won't ever look at you. He's looking down and he gets on the mound. And you think you got the big leg kick and you're expecting a hundred and it's like 85. <laughs> Damn, I can't hit that 85. Either. Is, there, like is there a walk up that you like Ryan? Who's who's besides your own? Who's are you like? That's kind of, that kind of slaps. Yeah, Edwin Diaz is obviously really cool. Um, I think they're the guy in Boston, uh, Bautista. I saw some stuff on social media about his. His looked really cool, too. Um, I think they do a good job. You know, it's a big time in the game and pivotal moment in the game. You know, I think the media platforms and these stadiums are doing a great job with, you know, getting the fans engaged and kind of hyping up the moment. Hey, I have a question about going back a while ago in this interview to, you know, Kratzy saying, hey, this is a big dude coming out of the bullpen. I asked about Jordan Walker. We had uh, Katie Wu on yesterday who covers your club for The Athletic, and she said, yeah, between those guys, plus you got Arenado, Wilson Contreras I don't want to mess with. Is St. Louis, like, the toughest team in baseball now? <laughs> I mean, we could be, you know. I mean, we got a lot of big dudes on our team this year. Um, but there's a lot of other big teams out there, too. I don't know. I mean, if teams go at it, it probably wouldn't be a pretty sight. You know, a lot of grown men out there throwing haymakers and might get – pretty ugly quick but uh you know hopefully it never comes to that do you and hicks have a velocity off do you guys look up at the scoreboard <laughs> and say well i can hit 104 hicks let me see if you can hit 105 do you guys do you guys have a little competition going on to see who can throw the hardest pitch this year we had a little friendly game going between us last year he started you know for the first couple months and so he wasn't really trying to throw as hard and then he got in the bullpen and i think i edged him out last year in milwaukee with 104.2 and i don't remember what he said his highest was like high 103s maybe but he actually just hit 104 six the other day so he must be feeling good and he's probably trying to break his his own record from you know a few years ago and that dude's a freak man he's so explosive and he's so talented obviously and you know he just makes it look so easy out there all right so let me let me ask you this if i told you your projections 
that they're saying you're going to project to have these numbers. Would you agree with them or would you disagree with them? And then I want you, after I say what they are, for, actually, first, I want you to say what your goals are personally, not as a team. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, you know, I, I just want to stay healthy, honestly. I don't really set numerical values for myself. You know, being in the bullpen, numbers can be skewed one way or another, especially ERA. So I'm um, really not trying to focus too much on that, honestly. Just trying not to walk guys and attack guys from pitch one and, you know, just challenging guys. You know, I mean, going out there, I really give up a hit on pitch one instead of pitch five, you know, run up the pitch count. So I'm just – my mentality is to go out there and attack guys, you know, right from the get-go and, you know, here's what I got and see if you can, you know – See if you can hit it. So so if I tell you they're projecting you at one strikeout per nine innings, like that doesn't hurt your feelings. I mean, nine <laughs> strikeout, one strikeout per inning, not one per nine, but one per inning. That doesn't hurt your feelings at all? Like that's not like – I mean, put some, I put guess I see where they're in. coming from. You know, my, my first three years, I didn't really strike out the world. And then last year, everything kind of clicked. And, you know, spring training felt good too. And, you know, had some good success this spring. So – just trying to carry that over and, you know, try to get in the groove and just stay in that groove, you know, all season long. How do you how do you carry that over? Because some guys will see, oh, well, you know, he's he's done this or he's done that. And what I watched of you last year, like there wasn't really like blips. It was just the constant same guy that like slowly got better as the season went on. And it's, it's crazy to say when you have a one two, but like how, yeah, I mean, how, how do you that, keep that going? Yeah, I mean, that's the idea. You know, out of the bullpen, you want to be as consistent as possible. You know, you're taking the ball 60, 70 times a year, you know, and you want your team and manager and, you know, even the fans to depend on you and have, have faith in you when you're out there, you know. I mean, obviously, it's baseball and we're all human and things aren't going to be perfect. But, you know, you try to be as consistent, you know, and steady as you possibly can out there. And, you know, I, I'm trying not to look back on last year. Obviously, it was a great year, but not trying to com compare, um, you know, and thinking I got to – redo that or you know be better than that i'm just trying to go out there and be the best me day in and day out and take it one pitch at a time uh, kratz you're just gonna throw out random projections what are they the <laughs> the, the kratz stats like you're not even gonna source where you're getting numbers because like someone else I, I i have not seen those just well, fyi yeah that's that was just my I, I formulated it i put it all on a piece <laughs> of paper and i said yeah how how are we gonna get these numbers next year no good I, job do i have to source them can you use those in arbitration next year? <laughs> you don't want these numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he says how much higher, he goes. Um, I have a question for you about the new rules, pitch clock, um, shift restrictions, everything that's now going to be in play. 